Hello everyone, today I'll be talking about absolute value equations and inequalities. But I'm going to start with equations because we need to start with the basics. So, first thing, I'm going to give you a bunch of examples. Whenever we're dealing with absolute value equations, the first thing you do is get the absolute value by itself. If it already is, then you break it up into two problems. The first problem, the exact same, just without the absolute value. So x equals 7. And the second one, um, drop the absolute value and then make everything on the outside negative. So x equals negative 7. And since there's no equation to really solve here, we're done with that. Two answers, x equals 7 and negative 7. And you see if you plug these in, absolute value of 7 is 7. Absolute value of negative 7 is still 7. So both of them satisfy the absolute value equation. Uh, for our second one, we would do the same thing. Break it up into two problems, but we have a problem here. We know the definition of absolute value is that it's always going to be positive. So if you have any absolute value that equals a negative number, that makes no sense at all. So therefore, this is going to give us no solution. But most of the ones that you do deal with are going to be solvable. So, another example. Break it up into two different equations. The first one the same. 7x minus 2 equals 9. And the second one, this, uh, the absolute value stays the same. But it equals um, the opposite of whatever's on the outside of it. So, solving this, first thing we do is move the negative 2 over, and that's going to become a positive 2, because we want to get rid of it. So those are going to cancel. We get 7x equals 9 plus 2 is 11. And then last step, just divide by 7. So we get our first answer is x equals 11 over 7. And then we do the same thing for the second one. We have 7x minus 2 equals negative 9. First thing we do is add 2. So we get 7x equals negative 7. And then we divide by 7. So x equals negative 1. And then it's a good habit to double check and see if your answers are right. So we can do that. Take both of these, plug it into that, and see if it works out. So our first one, we had absolute value of 7 times 11 over 7 minus 2 equals 9. Well, 7 times 11 over 7, 7 times 11 is 77, divided by 7 is 11. So pretty much those cancel out. And we have 11 minus 2. So we get absolute value of 9 equals 9, which is true. Check. Now we can check the negative 1. Plug in negative 1 into this equation. Absolute value of 7 times negative 1 minus 2 equals 9. You don't use the absolute value until you get everything in here condensed to one number. So 7 times negative 1 is negative 7 minus 2 equals 9. That's negative 9 equals 9. Absolute value of negative 9 is positive 9, so that one also checks out. Check. All right, a few more examples. Um, remember, the first thing you have to do with any of these is get the absolute value by itself. So what we want to do is we want to get the absolute value of 4x minus 3 by itself. To do that, first step, get rid of any adding or subtracting terms. So we add 2, both sides. So we get 2 equals, or 2 times absolute value of 4x minus 3 equals 18. And if we're multiplying by 2, get rid of that by dividing by 2. So that's going to give us our equation that we're dealing with. Absolute value 4x minus 3 equals 18. 
equals 9. And then we're solving that just like any other absolute value equation. Break it up into two parts. First part, uh, everything stays the same except you just drop the absolute value. So we have 4x minus 3 equals 9. And the second part, this stays the same, but this turns into a negative 9. So 4x minus 3 equals negative 9. And solving these are pretty much the same thing for both. First thing we do is add 3 to both sides. Add 3. We'll just do it at the same time this time. Um, so we get 4 equals, 4x equals 12. And here we get negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6, so we get 4x equals negative 6. And last step's the same for both again. Divide by 4 for both sides. And that's going to give us our two answers. So x equals 3 and x equals negative 6 divided by 4 can reduce to negative 3 over 2. Next one, the absolute value is already by itself, it's just got a lot of stuff in it. But we deal with it the same way, break it up into two problems. We have 4 minus 5x over 6 equals 3, and the same thing except we're going to make it negative 3. So we have 4 minus 5x over 6 equals negative 3. And solve them both, just like we did last time. Whenever you have a fraction bar, you have to look at everything in the top and the bottom as a group. So the first thing we have to get rid of is the 6, otherwise you can't really do much. So we multiply both sides by 6. Those 6's are going to cancel. So those cancel, and we just get 4 minus 5x equals 3 times 6 is 18. 4 minus 5x equals negative 18. So most of these are going to give you two answers. Unless you get 0 in the end, then it will just give you 0. But we keep going. Minus 4 for both sides. And remember, both are going to look very much the same, so we can do that to the other one. Negative 5x equals 18 minus 4 is 14. And negative 5x equals negative 18 minus 4 is negative 22. Not going to be very clean answers, but still okay. Divide by negative 5 on both sides for both equations. So we get x equals negative 14 over 5. Since we have a positive divided by a negative, we know our answer in, in the end is going to be negative. And here we have two negatives, so our answer is going to be positive 22 over 5. And I have one more. for this type, and then we're going to look at absolute value inequalities. So we have absolute value 3x plus 5 equals another absolute value of x minus 6. So we deal with this similarly, break it up into two problems. Same thing, uh, first one uh, stays the exact same, except that we just dropped the absolute value. Second one, most of it stays the same, 3x plus 5, but we turn, we turn one whole side negative, x minus 6. So make one entire side negative, so you're essentially going to flip the signs of both of these and make it negative x plus 6. But we'll solve these separately. So for our first one, we need all the numbers on one side and all the x's to the other, to the other side. 
So the first thing we can do is minus x for both sides. So that's going to give us 2x plus 5 equals negative 6. And then we get minus 5. So 2x equals negative 11. And the last step gives us our first answer. 2 divided by 2. X is negative 11 over 2. And for these, you have to plug them in to make sure it works out. For the second one, first we'll distribute that negative to both of these. So we have 3x plus 5 equals negative x plus 6. First thing we can do is move this x to the other side so we can add x. Because we need all the x's on one side, so we can combine them and only have one in the end. 4x plus 5 equals 6. Now we can move the 5 by minusing 5, just the opposite of what it says. So we have 4x equals 1. And the last step, divide by 4. We just get x equals 1 fourth. And then you should double check them by plugging them back in. But I'm going to save, this, save us the trouble. And both of our answers check out. So we can move on to absolute value inequalities. All right, so when we're dealing with absolute value inequalities, it's pretty much the same process as the regular equations. You break it up into two equations, but then in the end you have to graph it and give interval notation. So same thing, negative x minus 1 is less than 3. And when you make the other equation, you're also flipping this sign and making this negative. So we have negative x minus 1 is greater than negative 3. So those are the two equations we're solving. Um, pretty much solving the same way for both equations. First we're going to add 1 to both sides. So we get negative x is less than 4. Negative x is greater than negative 2. And then we have to divide by negative 1 for both. But we know when we divide by or multiply by a negative, when we're solving these things, we have to flip the inequality. So that's going to give us x is greater than negative 4 and x is less than 2. So we graph it on a number line. Negative 4 and 2, since they are just less than and greater than, we're using open circles. And greater than negative 4 is going that way, less than 2 is going that way, so we know it's everything between these two numbers. Another way to write that is in interval notation, negative 4, comma, 2. In parentheses, because they are open circles. For the second one, I'm going to go ahead and make it equal to. Um, solving it the same way, except our signs going the opposite direction. So notice I use the same equation. The only thing I changed was the inequality. I'm making it greater than this time. So we have negative x minus 1 greater than or equal to 3. And then negative x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 3. And we solve it the same way. We're going to get the same things here except these are going to be facing opposite directions. And they're going to have equal two signs under them since we changed that. So I'll go ahead and solve it out anyways. We have plus 1 on both sides. Negative x is greater than or equal to one, uh, 4. And then divide by negative 1 on both sides. We get x is less than or equal to. Since we divide by negative, have to flip the sign to negative 4. And this one, same steps, negative x is less than or equal to 
negative 2, divide by negative 1. So x is greater than or equal to positive 2. Draw a number line, put the two important numbers on it, negative 4 and 2. This time they are closed circles because they're equal to. And it says x is less than or equal to negative 4, that's this way. And greater than, which is this way. To write that in interval notation, you can just say negative infinity with a parenthesis to negative 4 with a bracket because it's close. Union to, to infinity because this keeps going on and on to infinity. And infinities always have the parentheses. And that's all I have for today.